Good morning. Thank you very much for attending this press conference uh, on the Czech presidency after the debate which took place uh, in the plenary. Uh, President Metzola has the floor. Thank you uh, very much and good morning uh, to all of you. Uh, let me warmly welcome the Council of the European Union President in office, uh, Czech Prime Minister Petr Fiala to the European Parliament. Let me also very warmly thank uh, President von der Leyen for joining us in Strasbourg today and also for being with us during the debate. Uh, with an illegal and brutal war on our continent, uh, the Czech presidency comes at a very important time and our next steps will be decisive for our union's future. We must keep, this is evident and came through uh, throughout the debate, uh, we must keep supporting Ukraine, we must keep defending our values and the rules-based world order and this is why our unity among our member states and among the EU institutions that we uh, represent is so important. Uh, the European unity with Ukraine and its people will be central to the Czech presidency's agenda and I am confident that it will be uh, a success. As uh, co-legislators, we also have an obligation to work together to deliver on laws that uh, will accelerate the green and digital transformations. Now is not the time to backtrack on our ambitions and uh, we have full confidence in the Czech presidency to do that. And finally, uh, we need uh, to follow up on the outcomes of the Conference on the Future of Europe. We can enhance the Union's capacity to act and our citizens expect us to deliver on this. And the European Parliament has shown, has demonstrated tangibly that it is ready to start the conversation. I will leave it at this in order for us to have time for as many questions as possible. I will pass the floor to Prime Minister Fiala and then Commission President Ursula von der Leyen. Yes, thank you very much, dear Roberta. It's a pleasure to be here in the European Parliament. We are taking over the presidency at a very difficult time. EU citizens expect from us that they will not face lack of energy next winter that they will not be afraid of more prices increases and that they will always have enough food on the table. As you know, the Czech presidency has defined five priorities. We want to focus on managing the refugee crisis and Ukraine's post-war recovery, energy security, strengthening Europe's defense capabilities and uh, cyberspace security, strategic resilience of the European economy, and finally, resilience of democratic institutions. We already started cooperation with European Parliament three weeks ago with the visit of the Conference of the Presidents of the, of the uh, EP uh, in Prague. After the conference, I discussed priorities with uh, Commission and with Council. I am glad I could present them to the members of the European, European Parliament today. I plan to work with the European Parliament for the next six months, so we come out of the situation stronger. I am very much looking forward for our cooperation. Dámy a pánové, já jsem měl dnes... Ladies and gentlemen, today... I had the honour to visit Strasbourg today and present the priorities of the Czech Presidency to the MEPs of all colours. I appreciate highly the role of the European Parliament in reacting uh, together with us uh, to the uh, Russian aggression in Ukraine. Uh, there is a war going on, people are dying, uh, fighting uh, for their right to be one of us, one of our nations. Uh, the Russian aggression, the impact of it, uh, uh, energy prices, all of that will be the main topics of the European Presidency of the European Council. And I'm very happy uh, to have gone through a very vivid debate uh, with the MEPs, and uh, we all were basically speaking with one voice, and I experienced a lot of support. Uh, the first steps 
on our way was the candidate status for the Ukraine, and uh, the European Parliament was very vocal in expressing their support. Uh, we must uh, now think uh, in the longer term uh, also of, uh, on the uh, Ukraine post-war. Uh, we must tackle the refugee crisis, the refugee waves. Uh, that, that's all our tasks. And this is why uh, this is also the slogan of our presidency, Europe as a task. And uh, as uh, I could see today in the European Parliament, not only the five priorities, but also our motto, our slogan, uh, grabbed attention. And uh, many colleagues uh, in the European Parliament also commented on uh, the slogan. I believe that uh, in cooperation with the European Parliament, we will find the best way forward. I'm looking forward for, to the cooperation. Uh, the tasks in the energy area will be very difficult. Uh, also, uh, energy sovereignty, sovereignty uh, cutting on our dependence on uh, Russian supplies. And many steps uh, have been done uh, by the European Commission, chaired by Madame von der Leyen. We will uh, have to uh, strengthen the alternative sources of energy. Uh, we will uh, have to discuss a lot. It will not be easy, but our goal is the same. Tackle inflation, tackle uh, high energy prices, uh, also find ways how to reduce, how to mitigate the impact on our citizens in the member states. Uh, we will try to strengthen European Union's economy, uh, to weaken the dependence on uncertain suppliers. Uh, we must uh, be good again in uh, innovation, digitalization, automation. All of that is part of the package that the uh, Czech presidency will try to resolve. And if we are successful in uh, agreeing with the European Parliament, then all the member states will benefit and will grow. The Russian aggression is not only a uh, physical threat, not only an economic threat, it is also a threat to our common values. Uh, they want to destabilize Europe and uh, the rule-based world order. And we can stop such aggression and aggressive regime only if we uh, strengthen our democratic institutions, if we uh, help our democratic institutions to grow and be stronger. In our democratic uh, uh, Commonwealth, so to speak. Uh, we have many different views. That's natural, can't be different than that. Uh, but uh, uh, nevertheless, even today, uh, we heard it again. What's important is that the European Union, in the key questions, must keep its unity. That's what will be our ambition, and I believe that the Czech presidency will uh, make its contribution and that in cooperation with other institutions, the European Union will be stronger after the six months. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Peter, Mr. Prime Minister Fiala. Thank you so much, Roberta, Madam President. Um, we have been discussing um, in the last days, uh, the details of the Czech presidency. Congratulations again for a very successful start. We were in uh, Litomyshl uh, as a College of Commissioner last Friday. We went through all the different topics in detail. So allow me today to focus on basically the three main topics uh, or the main mottos uh, for your presidency that you chose. Under Europe as a task, you've said rethink, rebuild, repower. And indeed, in Repower, the main focus is to have the same direction of travel, to get rid of the dependency of Russian fossil fuels, and over time, get rid of our dependency on fossil fuels overall. So how are we going to work on that during the Czech presidency? We have presented the package Repower EU. It's basically three pillars. The first one is diversification away from Russia towards trustworthy 
reliable suppliers. We are on our way there. The second is energy efficiency, a very powerful tool. And the third is massive investment in renewable energy. And along with this Repower EU package comes 300 billion euros to be invested in the European Green Deal and precisely in the renewable energy that we will need over time. So I count in your presidency on a rapid adoption of Repower EU. For Repower is, of course, also the second topic, Fit for 55. Council has found its position, Parliament has found its position, so we're very much looking forward better to have you in the trilogues now managing um, the completion of the files. And if I look at the very instant uh, work we are doing, we are pre preparing for all eventualities what gas supply from Russia is concerned. The Commission will present in two weeks an emergency plan based on national emergency plan, plan, plans in case of a disruption of full cutoff of Russian gas. Also in this topic, we are in very close cooperation. Rebuild. Of course, the topic um, of rebuild is dominated by reconstruction of Ukraine and really for Ukraine during this atrocious war. But we will also focus on domestic topics, and I want to take two here. Um, we have created, in uh, the wake of the pandemic, a recover um, a recovery plan, Next Generation EU, for the recovery of our economy. Here it's now important we have dispersed already 100 billion euros, another 700 billion euros of investment under next generation EU are ready to be uh, deployed. So we will work intensively on that during the presidency. The second topic where a focus is on is uh, the design of fiscal rules on our stability and growth pact. Here the challenge will be to reconcile financial sustainability, and the obvious investment needs that are out there. And the Commission will present a proposal right after the summer. But I do not want to miss to mention also the digital for rebuild. Here um, we want to conclude negotiations under your presidency, for example, on the European Electronic Identity, on AI, the European Chips Act, and possibly the Data Act. And last but not least, rethink. Of course, many topics are possible under rethink, but I want to mention the Conference on the Future of Europe. Uh, you know that I will be coming forward with my first proposals from the Conference on the Future of Europe during my State of the Union speech in mid-September. So I'm very much looking forward to work with you in this presidency. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take some questions. Check television there, please. Uh, Czech Television, Lukáš Lonsky, uh, thank you very much. Uh, my questions regarding uh, the thing that you already mentioned in the speech, Mr. Prime Minister, that's a taxonomy. If the European Parliament today votes for the veto, uh, what will be your next steps? And that's the same question for you, Madam President. What will be the next steps uh, of the Commission? Thank you. Just to set the scene, since this vote will take place in uh, just over half an hour, uh, so we'll, we'll wait uh, for the outcome of that, but I, I want to also on behalf of the Parliament say that regardless of the outcome of the vote, the EU needs to step up and deliver on energy and green uh, transitions. Uh, in the long term, our energy cannot be built on fossil fuels. We need to decouple ourselves from Russian dependencies and get our energy from our friends and not uh, our foes. Uh, we need uh, to get rid of energy islands and make sure we are connected among ourselves. So this parliament will be steadfast in asking for us to remain ambitious while also being realistic in order to make sure that immediate short-term measures do not become the new normal in the medium term. This is not the time to backtrack on our climate goals. Uh, so I will be uh, chairing the vote and then we will see the result and move on from there. That's from our end. Yes, thank you very much. Um, here at the European Parliament, in my speech today and in other discussions I was having with other political groups, I had an opportunity to reiterate several times this is a very fragile compromise that has been achieved by the Commission. 
That's why we would find it rather unfortunate if the decision taken by the European Parliament would be such that we would have to take a step backwards. We wouldn't like to see that. We think now it's time to move forwards, both in terms of decarbonization and de when it comes to the European um, energy and the taxonomy that includes nuclear energy as well as coal as a transitory measure. It's exactly the tool that many countries need to comply with climate targets and also to get rid of the dependency on Russian energy sources. So I hope that members of the European Parliament will look at this in the same way. If, however, the outcome is different from what we are hoping for, we will move on and we will take the steps necessary. Thank you. Yes, and um, indeed, we have as a Commission presented our proposals. You remember the first delegated act is on green energy. The second, now this delegated act in question, uh, is on the transition. And there are two uh, sources of energy in the taxonomy is the safest possible nuclear energy and hydrogen-ready pipelines for gas infrastructure. This, I am deeply convinced, we will need for the transition and we will need in the transition as a base load. So the Commission has presented now, it is the Parliament to decide. I've been very clear also with Parliament and Council if this delegated act fails, there will be no other delegated act. This also is very clear. Fernanda. Uh, Fernanda Gabriel, de Tuvisa RTP. Il y a la conférence de Logan. We had the conference, and Ms. von der Leyen, you always said that the Russians would have to pay. They would have to pay for what they have destroyed in Ukraine. We have figures which are extraordinary. 50 billion would be needed to reconstruct the country. There are also frozen assets, Russian frozen assets, to the tune of around 300 billion, 350 billion euros. Is it possible that that money would be used for reconstruction? I'd like to hear from all three of you on that, if possible. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think it is a matter of fairness to look into that is um, uh, issue. And uh, we are working on a legal basis to make it possible that um, assets of uh, Russia and also partially um, assets of oligarchs can contribute to the reconstruction of Ukraine. The Lugano conference was very successful because um, it was possible to channel many initiatives and to focus them on basic principles for the reconstruction. Now what will follow is the next high-level conference organized by the G7 presidency Germany and the Commission on convening all the outstanding global experts, experts on reconstruction. We've never done such a reconstruction before. We need the brightest and the best on reconstruction. And of course, then to create a governance that is comprehensive, that is accountable, that is convincing for all the different initiatives to then go into the financing and the coupling of investment and reforms for the reconstruction of Ukraine. Very quickly, from my end, uh, for this parliament, uh, no options should be off the table. Uh, all uh, legally uh, possible avenues and channels should be looked at. Uh, what is clear also for us is uh, that we should not allow any loopholes from uh, the already adopted sanctions packages to be uh, abused or exploited, uh, and that is something that we will continue to push for. Uh, and all our Ukrainian partners, after the historic uh, decision uh, of two weeks ago to uh, admit Ukraine and Moldova as candidate countries uh, for the European Union, that was automatically leading to the next step of reconstruction and rebuilding. This is an effort that is, has shown not only solidarity uh, from the ground up across all our European countries, but also on a global level. And this is where, of course, the role uh, of uh, the Czech presidency in leading uh, the organization of events that brings together the experts 
the political representatives and the, and the financing needed for that in order for us to show that we are uh, step by step across all the way in solidarity, full solidarity with Ukraine. I am very happy I uh, could uh, be at the conference in Lugano and uh, that I also uh, make part of the introduction along with uh, Ms. von der Leyen. What is important is that we must bring all the partners together and uh, we hope that the European Union uh, will play a key role in the uh, post-war reconstruction. But we also have to cooperate with other institutions, with third parties, which means countries and international institutions, uh, which uh, came to uh, the surface at the conference. Also, what's important, uh, what the Ukrainians think, what the Ukrainian friends think, how the, we should go forward. As you know, the post-war reconstruction of the Ukraine is one of the Czech presidency's priorities. We uh, are aware that the war is still uh, going on and there is a lot of, that there is a lot of suffering in Ukraine. But if the reconstruction process uh, should be successful, we must be prepared and we must prepare today. Uh, the Lugano conference was an important step, and then there will be more steps, as uh, Madame uh, uh, Chief Commissioner said. I'm not Czech agency. Uh, Luboš Palata from Denik, Czech Daily Newspaper. Uh, Madam uh, President Ursula von der Leyen, uh, we are five months before the winter, before very complicated winter. What is the situation with joint gas purchase uh, for EU? Thank you. So um, we are. Yeah, <laughs> we are, uh, are observing very closely the deliveries of gas. Um, we are filling our storages. That's point number one. A week ago, we were at 55 percent. We should be a bit higher already now. We have agreed to have joint purchase of gas other than Russian gas. Um, and you have certainly observed our activities, the agreement with the United States to increase the LNG. That is good. Um, we have seen that the LNG deliveries from the United States by now have tripled. But also other suppliers um, have increased their LNG supplies to the European Union or the pipeline um, gas supplies. So the overall LNG supplies have increased by 75 percent. That is also uh, very good and promising. This is at the moment being the status quo. I mentioned the investment in renewables. I mentioned the energy saving, which is an important pillar. But if worst comes to worst, then um, we have to be prepared. And that is the reason why the Commission is now preparing this emergency plan. All member states have national emergency plans. They, are, um, they have to have them. We have updated them together. But we think it is very important to have a European overview and a coordinated approach to uh, a potential complete cutoff of Russian gas. And here it is important to have two things in mind. We have to think about where does, is the gas needed most and how can we make sh uh, possible or make sure that the gas really flows to where it is needed most? And how can we protect the consumers and our single market? And this needs a concerted action with all different levels um, uh, to together with a European overview. For us, it's important that uh, we are able to show that we are prepared for that. And uh, we will present it, as I said, in, in around about two weeks in the college, um, this overall European emergency plan. I think we can take one more question. Yes, one last question. Uh, David, please. Thank you very much. David Carretta, Radio Radical, Italian Radio. Uh, on this... Uh, on this emergency plan, uh, uh, President uh, von der Leyen, uh, will, will, will this plan include uh, two uh, proposals uh, made by the Italian Prime Minister uh, already some time ago? 
uh, based on solidarity. So basically a cap price for gas uh, imported by Russia and a new sure mechanism to finance uh, uh, national measure uh, or to help government financing national measure for uh, uh, um, household and companies. And if I, if I may, because the second question to all, all of you, it's on political consequences of the crisis that will come. Uh, don't you fear that in the autumn, with major elections next year, in Italy, for example, there will be a sort of uh, a gilet jaune movement uh, around Europe that could put in danger uh, the political stability of the EU. Thank you very much. I think your last comment is the living proof um, why we have to have a coordinated European approach to protect our citizens and to support the most vulnerable citizens, but also businesses. And um, therefore, we have already um, uh, issued guidance on a toolbox. Uh, you remember perhaps in last fall, for example, to, take, to tax windfall profits, to take that money to support the most vulnerable consumers. That's actually what Italy does, and many other member states are doing that already. Why are we now preparing this emergency plan? Because uh, it is for an extreme situation where we rapidly, completely cut off of Russian gas, and there we have to be prepared. And the logic is, we saw in the pandemic, if I may uh, recall uh, two years ago, um, that uh, the worst that can happen is that we see uh, 27 different national uh, actions. You remember at the beginning of the pandemic, we had closed borders. Uh, some member states had all of a sudden an export ban, for example, on personal uh, equipment. Um, so this was absolutely not the way to go. And we learned the lesson that when we work together as Europeans, even in this brutal pandemic, we were able to overcome it. And I would say in hindsight, we overcome it in a good way. But this requires European common action, coordination, and unity. And the same logic goes for the emergency plan. Many decisions have to be taken by the member states. That is good. And they have their national plans. But, for example, if you look at the, um, at the single market, we have to make sure if we reduce the demand in certain sectors or parts of the economy, it has to be in a way that it does not hamper the overall single market. Because the single market is the strongest asset we have also to fight Putin's atrocious war. We need this leverage of a strong single market. And the second main pillar is indeed solidarity. Solidarity means we have a good pipeline net with network with a lot of interconnectors Europe-wide, but we have to make sure that the gas or, for example, oil supplies that come then are really distributed in a way that it serves the European common interest, that the gas goes where it is needed most. Now, on your question, this is what the emergency plan looks like. Reduction of demand, even solidarity of supply. These elements are important. Um, we have other tools in place. You mentioned it that we might, if we need it, activate like the sure element. But this is not part of the plan. The plan looks at the uh, energy security of supply. Now, the last part of your question, um, the capping. G7 decided to um, agree that we will look into potential mechanisms for an oil price cap. This would go for a global approach that we have an alliance of many countries that would be willing to put an oil price cap on Russian oil. And we have leverage to convince others who do not want to join the alliance to make sure that they don't circumvent uh, this potential oil price cap. Why am I mentioning that? Because it might be also a good platform that we have then established if we would need, uh, under special circumstances, also to look into a gas price cap. My main message is we really have to work together not only on a European but on a global level 
to manage the potential possibility of exploding energy prices. And there, a lot of intensive work is coming up to us. Taking the last word on intensive work, this is something that, uh, um, together uh, with uh, the Council, once proposals come uh, to the Parliament, uh, we will ensure that we can uh, get them through, uh, at the right, uh, through the right committees and in plenary as quickly as possible, as we have shown over the past months, uh, in order to make sure that whether it is financial assistance, whether it is us to deliver on our legislative uh, duty that we do as soon as possible. Uh, and that is a commitment that we have and we will do all, all throughout uh, the next few months uh, when the proposals come to us. You mentioned political consequences. I will draw from that also the economic consequences on, on consumers. If there is one thing that has dominated uh, also this morning's debate, but also yesterday's debate, which we had uh, with uh, uh, the Greek Prime Minister in the plenary, was precisely this. How are we, uh, as institutions, as political representatives, as member states, ready uh, to cushion the impact on member states when member states have so many different realities that for so many years were either uh, looked away from or uh, dependent on, to some extent, in some cases, 100% on Russia for the supply. Uh, I say this because, of course, this economic consequences, uh, that is going to be felt by everybody, uh, whether they are consumers, but also whether they are business owners, whether they are European industries, and we get a lot of concerns uh, about uh, that, uh, those sectors that should not be left behind, that should be kept in the focus of our legislative and political work. I also will then move to the political consequences of what you mentioned in terms of gov government stability. For us, when we look uh, at the need to have uh, governments that can deliver, that can explain decisions, that can take the difficult decisions, but can then explain them. Uh, and that uh, we feel immediately uh, in uh, the European Parliament. It can affect how votes and results uh, uh, take place uh, uh, within the plenary. Uh, and it also could take us back to what I am particularly concerned about, is that uh, we could uh, go back to the arguments that populists target the Green Deal as the reason for uh, increased prices and increased pressure. Let's not forget that the one... Uh, perpetrator in this case uh, is Vladimir Putin. The reason for rising food prices shortages is the Kremlin and that is something that we should not forget in the decisions that we take in order for us to be able to, as we did during the pandemic, as we will have to do, to take them together rather than the instinct would be to look inwards in each member state and not uh, uh, look at the common borders that we've worked so hard for us uh, to, to, to do away with from a rights point of view. Prime Minister. Energetická uh, sobiesť. Energy uh, sufficiency, uh, uh, energy autonomy is one of our priorities. And uh, here two things come together. Uh, it is urgent to have a European solution, and we will work on it. But we also one, are one of the European countries who are the most at risk, who, uh, whose energy uh, security is in danger because we are very dependent on Russian gas and Russian oil, and uh, we are aware what it would mean uh, if Russia just cuts, out, cuts us off. And we are also aware of how necessary it is to progress together as Europe and the European solidarity. And let me thank to the European Commission uh, for the clear steps uh, under the leadership of uh, Madam Chairman, Madam President, uh, in terms of alternative supplies, LNG, gas and so on. And uh, as Ursula rightly said, uh, individual countries do everything they can to be prepared for winter. Czech Republic, for example, has 70% uh, of gas supplies uh, in their storage. Uh, that's unprecedented for 
July. We are also uh, uh, seeking uh, new suppliers, uh, new LNG, because we are a landlocked country, which is uh, a disadvantage in this case. But if we don't have uh, common coordination, common plans, how to solve the situations, then it's the landlocked countries who will suffer most. So I believe in a, a very quick progress. We will, uh, as presidency, cooperate with the European Commission, with the European Parliament, and we will try to be prepared for the worst-case scenarios. As for the political consequences, yes, uh, we are facing in every member state uh, huge social problems. The uh, people need to be reassured uh, because uh, they have uh, rising prices of food, uh, fuels and inflation that is perhaps, uh, unprecedented over the last 30 years. Of course, uh, there are concerns and we have to take it seriously. Otherwise, uh, we may fail in our battle against the populists, against the extremists in Europe. As you know, uh, six months ago, we defeated the populists and, and extremist coalition, and we don't want to back, go back to that situation. And this is why I uh, repeat also uh, before the European Parliament, that uh, the goals uh, must be put together. Climate, economic prosperity, uh, refugees, and the support of the Ukraine, which is support for ourselves. And all of that must be put in the balance and uh, while we have social peace. And we cannot set one, one of these things as a priority and neglect the others. This is a recipe for disaster. Uh, one of our big tasks as presidency is that we need to find the right balance uh, in order to guide our societies through the difficult times.